Today I'm going to talk you through about technology within BB Distribution and how it's evolved over the two years since I've joined the business. I think my perspective on technology is maybe slightly different from a, what I would class as a classic IT specialist because I've actually trained as a chartered surveyor so I view technology as a businessman rather than as a pure techno geek. How does that impact on my speech today? Well, I'm going to try and talk to you in English rather than in binary, to be honest with you. So before I talk you through my presentation, I'm just going to run you through a short VT about video, Bibi Distribution. Bibi is a privately owned organisation. We've been around for 200 years, overarching Bibi Line Group. Then under that, there's eight companies. The most well-known company is Costcutter. And then there's obviously Bibi Distribution, which is the part of the business that I work for. We are a multifaceted logistics company, so we operate in a number of sectors. We operate on behalf of a number of household names, such as Unilever, Innocent Drinks, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Mercedes. We operate in excess of a thousand of our own drivers, about 1,500 trailers and about 600 units. We also, on top of that, have a fleet of about 100 tanker units. Without doubt, we have health and safety as our number one agenda. So we deliver safety first, and then it's about delivering service to the customers. Over the last 10 years, uh, Bibi have acquired half a dozen companies, and part of the challenge that we've encountered is right, how do you integrate six different companies? When it comes to technology, if you don't invest to bring all the systems together, you end up with a diverse array of systems which don't talk, so you don't optimise your business performance and so you don't optimise the solution that you'll ultimately provide to your customer. Technology, in my book, is an enabler within a business. A business is still all around people, it's still all around the interaction. I see myself as a businessman trying to make best use of technology, not somebody who's just driven by technology that will force it into the business at any cost. The evolution of the Bibi Line Group is actually very visually demonstrated by the comparison of one of our first vessels, the Mary Bibi, shown here in 1820 departing her home port of Liverpool, when compared to the latest uh, boat that we've launched, the Bibi Wavemaster, which launch, launched this year to support the offshore wind industry. You can actually argue that we're one of the world's oldest 3PLs, having been moving freight for nearly 200 years. To follow the theme of the day, I've actually got a couple of questions for you, if you kindly respond. Um, the first question is, what's the number one focus of your business? If you could kindly press one for customer service, two for safety, three for efficiency, or four for profitability, if you'd like to vote now. Pretty split vote, but it's very heartening to see that lots of people do have health and safety at the very top of their agenda. I think that ties in very nicely with where we are as a business, because as I said in the VT, the number one priority for our business is actually health and safety. And I'm going to talk you through today how we use technology to drive our health and safety culture, and how this can actually have a direct and positive output in terms of affecting our customers, our colleagues, and ultimately the profitability of our business. Within the world of third-party logistics, companies are always looking to distinguish them, themselves from the crowd. I remember when I was at the first Bibi Annual Conference, I was stood on stage and I was asked a question from the floor. Nigel, they said, we need to drive innovation. When will the IT team deliver the equivalent of the iPhone X to, to revolutionise the Bibi business? To put this question into context, Motorola produced the first mobile phone in 1973 and it actually took 10 years before that was commercially available. Apple introduced the first iPhone in 2007 and have subsequently released 12 further versions. So this leads to the debate around the revolution or evolution of technology not only within our, our business but also within the industry as a whole and do we have the budget to drive an innovation agenda, 
or do we need to surgically and strategically invest in our technology? This is also driven by the fact that technology is an ever-changing uh, feast and at the increasing pace that technology is, is changing, it's a challenge for us all to understand what is the correct point for us to actually adopt new technology within our businesses. That leads on to my second question for you about technology in your business. So how would you rate the technology setup within your business? If you'd be kind enough to press one, needs a lot of work, two, needs some improvement, three, good, and four, for excellent. If you'd vote now. Needs some improvement. I think we've got a lot of honest people in the room there saying, saying needs a lot of work and needs some improvement. When I actually joined uh, the Bibby business a couple of years ago, you know, I looked at something that, in my opinion, needed significant improvement. The Bibby business had actually grown through orga organic growth plus acquisition. This meant we were in a position where we have numerous legacy systems this included five transport management systems, handily enough, none of which talked to each other. We had four different telematics solutions, all from different providers. Again, not linked, all operating in isolation. So you can imagine this presented us some significant challenges from an operational perspective. We've gone through the process of replacing the five legacy transport management systems and now have one integrated solution, which is driving significant efficiency within our business. Going back to the theme around health and safety, as a group, we operate within some of the harshest environments in the world as we support the oil exploration sector and our ships travel the high seas. This sets the health and safety bar at an incredibly high level, and it's something that Sir Michael Bibby, seventh generation owner of the business, is incredibly proud of. At the end of the day, we have over 1,500 trucks driving around the UK with his name on the side. So we have to make sure we protect the brand. Being candid, we were actually very concerned about the number of incidents we were having as a business two years ago. These were primarily low-level incidents, but indicated we weren't driving the correct culture from a health and safety perspective. We knew we needed to change. As I've already said, we had plenty of systems, and the systems were providing us with plenty of data. However, the data that came to us was muddled, inconsistent, and didn't actually allow us to make fact-based decisions. As health and safety is so important, literally the first project I got involved in two years ago was to say, right, how can we improve our system proliferation? So we carried out an assessment of the marketplace and identified a preferred supplier for our telematic solutions and we then embarked on replacing our telematics units in 600 tractor units and adopting a, a unified dashboard that presented the telematics data in a fashion that could be understood. This was simple to read at driver level and helped identify all the driver strengths but also where the opportunities lay. In parallel, we invested in our, in our people and that was key to our performance we doubled the size of our driver trainer team. So we had better technology, we had the team, and then we put in place a process. And that process gave us the ability to react to the data. The output of this combination of data, people, process was actually quite stunning. Those of you who attended the awards dinner last night, where Bibby was proud and honored to have four drivers in the final of Driver of the Year for the first time. So we've got four of the best drivers in the entire country. And we've been greatly assisted by the use of telematic data in terms of improving that performance. For those of you who are here who aren't familiar with telematics data, what it basically gives you is the ability to monitor and assess the performance of a driver. And then it gives you a subset of data thereafter so you can actually judge the performance of the company or the performance of a depot or an individual contract. 
So the graph behind me actually shows the output of the data. I'm actually pleased to say, in this particular instance, a low number is actually good. Because if it was the other way around, I probably would have been sacked by now, to be honest. So the, the data actually shows that in 2015, that we were performing at a grade well in excess of three. For those of you of a similar age to me, and I noticed from the survey earlier on that there's quite a lot of us around the 50 mark, so we've all done our O-levels. So a three would have given us a C stroke D at our O-levels. And I don't know about you, but my parents would have been singly unimpressed with me if I delivered a rack of Ds at my O-levels. So the performance you can see steadily improved. The green line, the green horizontal line, is actually the performance of what you would say is a good industry driver. So you can see we hit, in 2016, the red line, the performance of a good industry driver. That stepped on again in 2017, and you can actually see, again, we're operating at a level of 2.1, which again, back to my O-level comparison, will actually give us a bit, about an A-. minus. So still a bit of work to do, but it's going very much in the right direction. So how does it, this actually affect us out on the road? Well, our accidents per million kilometers driven has reduced significantly. We've taken a 12% reduction in our accidents over the past year. And when benchmarking across the industry, this puts us in a very, very strong position. There's also a side benefit of the investment it's not only driven health and safety, but it's also driven our performance of miles per gallon. And this has benefited Bibby, but also this benefit has flowed straight to our customers by an improvement in their, their cost per mile. So again, you can see from the graph that we've got three lines. Again, thankfully in this case, the higher the number, the better the number. So blue represents where we were in 2015, red 2016, and you can see again, we've stepped up in 2017. Another additional benefit to this, again, which we're very proud of, is we've actually reduced our CO2 emissions on the back of this improved driving style by over 10%. So, moving on from telematics, referring back to, again to when I joined the business a couple of years ago, I had people knocking on my door saying, Nigel, we need tablets, tablets, tablets. We need tablets in the business. Everybody's talking tablets. And I thought, Slightly cynically, all they wanted them for was to shut the kids up and give them something to go home and play on. But we did some research around tablets. And yes, there's the obvious benefits. We all probably have them. But we use them for the world that never sleeps, commonly known as email. But there were significant benefits, potentially from a health and safety perspective. And we invested in tablets. We developed our own app technology within the business. This provided an app for all our depot managers to use, to inspect prior to vehicles going out on the road, to inspect around the warehouses, the yards, to make sure we had a clear and consistent way to deliver health and safety compliance. The app feeds back into a central database, which gives our regional general managers and our directors clear reporting. And we get exception reporting to say, right, what's great? but also where do the opportunities still exist for further improvement. We then took our development to another level. We then started to invest in an app to in relation to rack inspection. It might not sound the most exciting rack inspection app, and it's probably not one you'll go and download from Google. However, for those of you who operate warehouses, you'll understand the importance of rack control and rack maintenance. For those of you who don't, I think there's a break coming shortly. For those of you who don't manage warehouses, go out, go onto YouTube and type in rack collapse. And you'll be absolutely shocked and stunned about what it brings up. And that's why racking inspection apps are so important to our business. So the rack app that we developed provides clear transparency across our business around the maintenance regime and the control of how we manage damaged locations. So we make sure that we meet all the regulations of SEMA and the HSE. 
I'm pleased to say that the work we've been doing on health and safety hasn't just been recognised within our business, but it's been recognised independently by ROSPA and the British Safety Council. We've also linked our development in technology and health and safety into mobile communication. So we've got 2,500 colleagues who work across the business, and they cover shifts seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So the, it's very difficult to get a clear and consistent message to all the colleagues. You know, historically, people may rely on the traditional notice board to pin information up to get to the drivers who start at four in the morning. But we've been working hard to develop an app which is going to be released in the next few weeks, which will give us a direct route of communication to all our drivers. And this can be used not only for health and safety. We can send them health and safety alerts. We can send them weather warnings before they go out on the road. We can also allow them easy access to HR systems. So we take away the pain of doing things like booking holidays. And also, from a corporate perspective, they get a clear and consistent message of all our communications around the entire business. Don't get me wrong, this does not do away with the actual need for face-to-face -face briefings with the drivers. However, it just puts another tool in the Bibi communication toolbox which allows us to have a more informed and cared for workforce. At the start of my presentation, I said I was a businessman looking to drive a tech agenda. I've tried to give you a couple of examples, without boring you silly, around how we've strategically invested in our business. Going back to the question I was asked at the conference, have I developed the next iPhone 10? To be frank, no, and I have no intention of developing the next iPhone 10. Has the approach that I've taken to technology within the Bibi business made a significant difference to our health and safety culture? The answer is yes. Has it made a significant difference to our colleagues? The answer again is yes. And has it made a significant difference to our customers? Again, the answer is yes. As a businessman, I firmly believe that investing in health and safety and associated technology to drive your health and safety performance can actually make a significant difference to the bottom line of your company. I'll leave you with one final thought before I disappear. It's all about people and process working in harmony with technology. Technology is an enabler. It is a means to an end and not an end in itself. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nigel. Um, you're very popular too. Loads and loads and loads of questions. Well, um, from the ladies, that's okay. <laughs> um, we're just going to have to restrict it to one. Do you share those cost savings with your drivers? And if so, why not? Interesting question. One of the key things that we talked about was dri delivering improved driver standard through better pay. But when we went on this journey around the telematics, we had the four different telematic solutions that all reported the data in completely different ways. So you could no longer, or sorry, you couldn't even start to benchmark driver performance from Quentin to myself because we might be assessed in completely different ways. So on that basis, we couldn't do that. But we're now moving towards a basis of looking to introduce an incentivized system based off telematics as we go forward in the future. So, yes, it will directly affect the drivers. Good. Wonderful. OK, we are running very, very behind, so I'm going to restrict it to that. Nigel, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Thank you.